Here's a stat for you. Brett Hundley now has more overtime wins in his career than Aaron Rodgers. Holy crap. I can't believe we just won that game. I think we can run the table. I really do. Giants looking for a stop. They're going to air it out. Rodgers does this better than anybody. End zone. Send the Packers into the NFC Championship game. It is good! The Packers are moving on! Aaron Rodgers has done it again! Grassy Posse Packers! Nation! Welcome to another episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't have to be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. Holy crap, man. I, I can't believe we just won that game. I, I don't know how that actually happened. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm actually stunned. But let, let's, let's talk about that game because there's a lot of negative here. Let, let's be honest. But the important thing is, no matter how bleak it looks... The Packers are remaining in the playoff hunt in the NFC. Aaron Rodgers is getting a bone density scan tomorrow to see because he is eligible to come back next week against the Carolina Panthers. Wow. All right, let's 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 go through this game bit by bit. Uh, first drive, amazing. We go for it on fourth down twice, one with a fake punt. It looks like this team is motivated to make the playoffs. It's insane. Uh, we're aggressive. It's wonderful. We got a touchdown. Hundley continuing to play well uh, in at least the first drive. Williams gets wide open because of a blown coverage. Williams is amazing. Uh, gets the first TD. Josh Gordon gets his first TD since 2014. Guy is an amazing player. It looked like he was going to run all over us all day. But after the first half, he was completely shut down. And so I have to tip my hat a little bit to the defense there. But we started getting stuffed in the running game. We were completely stalling our... Offense looked like crap. Our defense looked like crap. Uh, Kaiser was looking great. He was stepping up in the pocket. We weren't getting any pressure on him. You had a Duke Johnson TD. The T- the Packers did not look motivated in any way, shape, or form. Penalties kept a lot of drives alive, and the Packers just could not put put the points up. Ha ha got the pick at the end uh, of the first half, but there was no urgency with this team, and yeah, that was that was nuts. And then nothing happened essentially. This. This team looked like crap. They did not look. They were not playing well on either side of the ball. Uh, they they went for it on fourth with eight minutes on the third quarter on the ten, which, good God, that's a risky ass call and it and it didn't work because Hundley blew a cover, blew a play, and you're supposed to pitch it out to Williams. He didn't. He gets sacked, and at that point, I, I wrote, "Wow, this is disgusting." And that's honestly what the Packers played like for three quarters besides the first drive. Um. There was no momentum by the Packers. They were down by 14 and like with three minutes left in the third quarter. And I wrote literally fire everybody. Aaron Rodgers was getting pissed off. You saw him on the sideline. He was seething. Uh, and then we drove down the field again. We were down by 14. Williams got another touchdown, this time on the ground. Looks great. House got re-injured, which looked terrible. He got carted off. Hopefully, he's going to be okay. But right now, we don't have King or House, so our defense is definitely banged up, and we got some issues there. Um, All day, we had zero pressure on Kaiser. He had all day to throw the ball. He had no problems doing that. And then some of the play calls that were happening, you're talking like second and short, third and short, and Huntley's bombing the ball 25 yards down the field, and he's not hitting these guys. Hunley is not a great deep thrower. I, I th- unless the guy is wide open like Williams is, the guy can't throw to somebody who's running for it like Devontae. It's those short, dinky little passes that are keeping it. I'm surprised we didn't see any of the read option, but that, that was bad uh, at all. Five minutes left, and we had to punt down by a touchdown. I was incredibly nervous. Um, but I have to give it off to Mike McCarthy. He had it was great play calling. It was great uh, challenging that play. Uh, the defense was able to hold them. 
And then Trevor Davis, I noted in the beginning that this guy, was he was bound to make a big, big return, and he did. He ran it back 65 yards, put us in scoring range, uh, but there was a lot of time lost on that last drive in the fourth quarter. A lot of time wasted, but it wound up working. Brett Hundley, as we know, is great on his feet, was able to scramble, get down to the one-yard line, and blew everyone away by a great toss to Devontae Adams to get the tying touchdown. We go into overtime and we lose the coin toss, which I'm like, oh crap, here we go again. Like this is, this team is giving me ulcers, but Clay Matthews is able to get some pressure on Kaiser. Kaiser makes a terrible decision after playing amazing the entire game, throws it up, it gets picked, and Devontae Adams again with a touchdown, and we are in it. Um, Good God, I I can't I really can't believe we won that game. Devontae, pay that man. Pay him all of the money. He has emerged as a fantastic receiver. I am so confident with him. He's got sure hands. He's clutch. He's getting every single yard. And I have to get up for Hundley. I mean, you, you for the way that the first three quarters looked, it looked like he was playing like hot garbage. But his end stats, and this was helped literally just by the end of the four, the last three minutes of the fourth quarter and overtime. He was 35 for 46, 265 with three TDs and no turnovers. He was cautious with the ball, sometimes overly cautious, and he made some he made some clutch throws. Williams, what a star! 15 for 49 on the ground with a touchdown and seven for 69 for a touchdown uh, through the air. And Adams, 10 for 84 with two touchdowns. Jordy Nelson, again, got involved a little bit early on in the game, but he's still kind of irrelevant without Aaron Rodgers. But, man, Packers fans, this is what we've been waiting for in that we, we have a chance now for Aaron Rodgers to come back. And, honestly, at this point, Carolina won, which sucks, which means that the Vikings, they haven't clinched the North, but – that does hurt our playoff hopes. And the Lions won, which sucks again. We are playing both of these teams. Of course, Carolina will be played next week. And that's going to be a huge game for us to even keep our like minimal playoff hopes alive. But you can see Rod- Rodgers wants to be in there. He wants to play. And this will be a different team with Rodgers. But let's be honest, guys. This is the And this is not a slight in our, but This is a team that has won, the Browns. They've won one game in two years, and we made them look like all stars out there. Now they are a much their defense is criminally underrated, especially their running defense. And Josh with Josh Gordon back, they are a different team. But the, we had no business winning this game. And you have to take a look at again, what is this team without Aaron Rodgers? We've been able to squeak out some wins, two in overtime, but and the Bears. But man oh man, this is, this was a rough game to watch. And if we didn't win this game, this would Definitely be a different podcast, and I, I was pissed watching the entire game because it was just disgusting on both sides of the ball. But a win is a win. But I think Ro- I, I think Rodgers has proven with his absence that he really is this entire team. We are able to scrape away wins, but we had to go into overtime against the Buccaneers, and we had to go into overtime against the freaking Cleveland Browns. Both games we could have easily lost. And if you have a team that's even decent on the other side of the ball, we, we lose this game. And so even with Rodgers coming back, I'm ecstatic. I am so excited for that man to come back, if he does, hopefully. But we really need to evaluate this team because you look at someone like the Vikings, who's able to go on this great run without their starting quarterback, with Case Keenum there, without their starting running back, and they're still able to to do amazing things. They are still able to only have three losses. So that being said, I want to curb our enthusiasm a little bit, considering while Rodgers is going to make this team significantly better, there are still huge problems with this team. But right now, I'm going to enjoy the win, one that I didn't think was possible. (sighs) I'm going to go have a beer, and... Pray that Aaron Rodgers' uh, bone density test comes back and that he can take a hit and he can come back on Sunday and start for the Green Bay Packers. But let me know what you thought of the game. Very curious to get your take on it. Uh, What do you think about Capers, McCarthy, Hundley, etc.? You can always find me at TomGrossyComedy.com, T-O-M-G-R-O-S-S-I Comedy, or TomGrossyComedy on Twitter. Check out PatCast, P-A-C-K-A-S-T. We are, this podcast, we're here two times a week. We do reactions this after every single Packers game, and we also have interviews with the opposing team's fans every Thursday. 
Uh, and we also have predictions episode as well. We're on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, Google Play Music. You can find us there. Um, thank you so much for watching. Man, oh man, we, we stayed alive. You starting to feel like it's destiny again. The pupper did it again. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, go pack go.